Hey guys, welcome to my second video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so excited to show you the part two and the finish of our dining room accessories that we did to go with the new dining table um, and also a little organizing to clean up my side of the desk because it can get messy sometimes. So we need a creative solution for that. So I'm gonna go through all of those with you today. And don't forget to subscribe and hope you enjoy the video. So now that we've got our table done and refinished, I'm excited to get this going. And so our first project, everything's from Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby. So it's very easy to get your hands on these items and to do it for yourself and they come out gorgeous. Um, so we're gonna use these table uh, placemats <laughs> that go under your dish and we're gonna turn that into some cute, fun, kind of macrame looking or macrame inspired um, art pieces, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so first you're gonna go to your local store, Hobby Lobby, um, Michaels, anywhere that sells uh, yarn, and you're gonna choose any width or thickness that you like um, in the colors that you like. Then you're gonna choose a wooden dowel, um, something not too thick, maybe like a quarter of an inch, uh, just so that you have something to tie the string to, which is what's gonna also hold up the table placemat. You're gonna measure out the width of the placemat and mark the wooden dowel, and then you can go ahead and cut it to the size of the placemat. And then we're gonna tie the yarn to the stick before we attach it to the placemat. Then you're gonna mark halfway down the placemat. I just used a really light marker just so it doesn't bleed through. That way you know exactly where you're gonna cut down the placemat. We need to cut it in half because we're going to use it both sides to make two separate pieces uh, and also so that it fits properly to the wooden dowel and doesn't block any doesn't block any portion of the yarn. So now that we have it cut, we're going to measure out our yarn. I did it full arm's length, um, but you can do it however long or however short you like. Keep in mind, we are going to cut it at the end to how we like it, whether if that's a rounded edge or straight across, it's up to you. But I like to do it a little extra long so that way I know I have room to cut. Majority of my yarn is gonna be from the white because I want that to be the background behind the green. And you'll see the design I come up with just to give it a little more dimension, it's not too flat. Once you have it measured, you're gonna cut only one side of the yarn. And we're gonna use the other side that has the loop to tie it around the wooden dowel. Because I'm doing two sets of yarn for the first one, I'm only gonna tie the white to the wooden dowel and I'm gonna hot glue gun, or you can use any other sturdy glue like Gorilla Glue or anything like that, super glue to attach the green yarn. And you're just gonna do a simple like slip knot around the wooden dowel. We're gonna hot glue this to the table placemat so you don't have to worry about it coming loose. So now that I have the white completely attached to the wooden dowel, I'm gonna hot glue in the center of my placemat where I want the green yarn to go. I'm doing this first before I attach the wooden dowel with the white yarn so that I can have a layered look and you can see the green before the white. So today we're going to be 
finishing up the dining room. I'm so excited. Um, right now we're gonna do the storage units that I need for all of my supplies and all of my samples that I get for our company. So this is gonna be exciting. I can't wait because look at this mess. It just piles on my desk and then I can't use it. <laughs> so let's get this started. working on now the next part for the dining room which is going to be the artwork i'm super excited about this one i've seen a lot of people do this on their own and so i thought i'd try it out um it's not a lot of line work or anything like that it's just watercolor and honestly i just got these paints from the dollar tree um i'm not trying to spend a lot of money on this <laughs> i just got two pack canvas so it came together at hobby lobby it was on sale for $5.99, um, I think normally like 15, 20 bucks. So that was like a huge steal, which is perfect because like I said, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this. So first you're gonna get a couple of uh, bottles of water. Um, could be faucet water. I just reused this cut up water bottle um, so I don't get any paint on any of my glasses that I drink from. And then I just got the styrofoam plate, which is what I'm gonna mix some of the colors with. Now I'm planning to paint all around the edge of the canvas. I'm going to also glue this like ripped looking um, watercolor paper on top of the canvas. So one, it's easier to paint on and two, just to give it a little bit of dimension, more artistic look. You're going to want to paint about an inch around the entire frame. And then because I want like a clean finish and I really want it to stand out, I'm going to also paint around the outer edges so that you really don't know, realize that it's a canvas. Uh, and we're going to do it black so it can really stand out against our walls. Now you're going to cut the watercolor paper to fit the size that you want. And then because it's a clean cut, I decided to make it a little more roughed up. So I just used the side of the scissors. Then you're going to choose the colors that you like. Uh, you can create your own by mixing some colors together or you can just use straight out the bottle. And you're going to wet your paintbrush and just lightly dip it into the paint and then add more water to it. And you're going to go across the, water, the watercolor paper and just try and get that really light transparent look and just add as you like the colors as much as you like the thick side and then the thin side just to kind of create that depth and dimension and just the various lines and you can add more water to it to dilute it a little bit even after painting it it's a little bit inconsistent but I like that because it's kind of the whole purpose of this is for it to look not purposeful just to make it look really fluid and like it was meant to flow down the paper. Now we're gonna let these two dry and we're gonna go back to our macrame project to finish that up and show you how we're going to attach it to the wooden dowel and hang it on the wall. So for my second macrame uh, table placemat wall hanging, I decided to do a mixed fabric look or mixed yarn look. So I chose two colors, two neutral colors, the white and the tan just to kind of mix it up a bit and that way the white against the against this one can really stand out from the first macrame project. So like I did in the first one yesterday, we're just going to do the little slip knot around the wooden dowel and once I'm finished with this, we're going to hot glue on it 
to the table placemat. Try to glue it about a quarter inch to half an inch above the edge so you really get a good amount of space and so you don't see the slip knot once it's hanging. Now to cover the edges, I like to wrap the end of the table placemat around the sides so that you don't see the wooden dowel and it's a seamless look. Now that we have that done and our watercolor should be dry by now, we're going to switch on back to that. So now we're going to add glue to attach the watercolor paper back to the canvas and then we're going to seal the entire thing with Mod Podge. I really like this because it also acts like a glue but it dries extremely clear. I choose the matte finish because I don't want to see any sheen or shine when I'm at an angle from the light because we do have a window right near this area. But satin or semi-gloss, I think they have, is also a great choice if you want that shiny finish. And once we let that dry, then we're going to be able to hang it. Once we hang our macrame project, we're gonna straighten out all the yarn with our fingers, just run it right through like if it was a brush, just to kind of open them up and clear it out so they're not all knotted. I like to do it overlapped when I hang them so that they have a little bit more uh, eye-catching appeal to it and so that you can really see the, the difference in color and dimension. And again, you're just gonna drag your fingers down to straighten out the yarn. Then you're gonna cut the edges how you like and your project is complete. I'm so happy with how our dining room turned out. I really like these little added touches. It really gives it more appeal and it just pulls the room together. Our dining table from last week came out amazing and I'm just super excited. My hair look all crazy. Yeah, that's a good part. It doesn't look bad. It looks gorgeous. You look gorgeous, darling. <laughs> you look gorgeous. You look gorgeous, darling, darling. You look amazing. <sighs> Gosh, welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about how to paint your nails. You have a hair across your face. Do I? Yes. Can you take it off? Look at the camera. I can't see it on the camera. <laughs> You're like poking me in the eye. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, fine, but fine, but. A pitch. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to my second week. Oh, no, that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cut. <laughs> a little link right here. <laughs> I was trying to see where my hand was going. <laughs> Should I start all over? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure I just cut it and just edit it out. It's up to you. 